Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within us. Bless his holy name. We thank you, DLA. We welcome you again. We welcome those who are joining us for the first time. Welcome. Thank you for joining us in worship and in praise. Amen. We give God the glory. We Amen. give God the praise that Amen. is so rightly due his name. So join me as I open in prayer. As we prepare our minds, we prepare our hearts to go yes, into Lord. worship, to go into where the Father is, into that secret place. So yes, join Lord. me. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes as we set our hearts, as we set our minds to the Father, to the Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, Father, we thank you for who you are this morning, oh yes, God. Lord, we, we give you the honor. We give you the praise that is so rightly due your name, Lord. Yes. We thank you for life this morning, Lord. We thank you for the air that we breathe this morning, Lord. As we enter into worship, Father, we pray that you would ride on our praises. You would ride on our praises. You will come in, Lord, as we worship you, as we give you the honor. As we give you the worship, Father, you will come in, Lord. You will enter and inhabit, inhabit, inhabit the praises of your people, Lord. Inhabit the praises of your people. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this house, into deeper life this morning, Father. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the worship, Jesus. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against your church, against your people, Lord. We thank you this morning, Father, that you are with us, Lord. As we give you the praise, as we give you the worship, Lord, yes. we enter in, Lord, Jesus. and you enter in together, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Yes, Come on, hallelujah. Thank Come you. on, hallelujah. put your hands together. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet if you can. We call hallelujah. everybody from the outer court into the inner court. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you are, that means if you're in the foyer, come on in. Yes. We got God is about to do something great in this house hallelujah. today. How many are ready for what God is about to do? Come on, hallelujah. shout. Now, we got to come expecting because that's yeah. what God requires. Amen. Amen. Come Amen. expecting by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes.
you to greet somebody in this house turn around shake a hand if you can I, I think we're doing some hugs uh, some folks are still waving I understand that's all right amen but we encourage you to dance in the presence of a holy God amen right
of fire in your life. Hallelujah. We need that fire, Lord. Yes. Every hour, every day, we give you praise, Father. You are worthy of every praise. Lift those hands. God, we are not just here to, to have a show of any kind, but God, we're here to worship and to praise you. And we just thank you for this opportunity. Anybody glad that you can lift your hands? Come on. Well, I want to say it like this. If you couldn't lift both hands today, you're in the right place. God's about to fix all of that. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you right now. Come on, just pray with me a little bit. God, saturate this house with everything that is desired. Only you know the hearts and the lives of every person in this room. You know all our needs, all our flaws, all our failures, God. So we thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, come and show your power as in days of old. Lord, Lord, let your, your fire fall. Burn up the idols. Burn up the idols. Of wood and stone, Lord, Lord, let, let your fire fall. We come before you, Father. We offer you our lives, our hearts. Are
Come on, if you need a healing, lift those hands right here. Healing anointing is in this room, yeah. If you know the Holy Spirit comes, he comes like a fire, Lord, Lord, Lord. Make this a house of prayer, your house of prayer, right now say, Lord, make me, make me a house, make me a house of prayer. Let the expectation of our people go right now. Personal. Come before. 
before you. We come before you, Father. We offer you our lives right now. Every hand lifted up for one more day. Oh Lord, let your fire fall. We expect you to move in a mighty way today. Father, we ask that your glory would fall in this place, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will be here with us this morning. We open our hearts unto you, Lord, even as we have been singing, our hearts are on your altar. Consume it as a sacrifice this morning, Lord. Accept our worship as we bow down in your presence, as we call your name, as we lift you up, oh God, as we worship and we praise, as our mouths, oh Lord, are filled with words of thanksgiving and glorifying you this morning. Fall in the house. Permeate the sanctuary with thy Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. Let your spirit be felt in our midst, O oh God. For without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we are, we are just beating the air. Without your presence, Father, our words are empty, O oh Lord. So come, Lord. We invite you to come. And take thy rightful place in the sanctuary on the throne of our hearts, oh God. This is your house. This is your church. These are your people. We are your people, your temple this morning. Lifting up, oh God, praises unto you. And desiring nothing but your pray, your presence and your anointing for it is the anointing that breaks the yoke this morning it is the anointing that sets us free it is the anointing that's going to break the chains it's the anointing that's going to mend the hearts it's the anointing of God that is going to bring the victory and so Lord we covet your anointing this morning we are 
touch your presence. Fill this house. Let the glory of the Lord fall in a mighty way this morning. We glorify you. And we may revel in your presence, Lord. Oh, that you may give, oh, we may give you all the glory and the honor and the praise this morning. For we acknowledge you as our God and our King, our Savior and our Lord. There is none like you, we declare it boldly. There is none like you, Father. So we give thanks unto you. Hallelujah. We lift up our prayers unto you this morning, Father. We ask that you would remember your people in deeper life this morning. Every aching heart this morning. Every troubled body. Every spirit, oh Lord, needing a touch from you. Every disease, every sickness in the house this morning, oh Lord. You said in your presence, sickness must depart. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In your presence, there is victory. In your presence, Lord, there is liberty. So we ask you, Father, to come. Come and cleanse the house. Come and cleanse the hearts. Come and cleanse our bodies of sicknesses and diseases in the name of Jesus. Come and be God in our midst. Come and be our healer. Come and be our deliverer. Come and be our protector. Come and be, oh Lord, our Jehovah Rapha. The one that heals us. Come in the fullness of thy might, oh God, to destroy the works of the enemy in the lives of your people. Come as the mighty man of war to declare war against the enemy. Come, Father, come in the name of Jesus. We call you, we invite you, we covet your presence in our midst this morning. Hallelujah. We lift up prayers on behalf of those hurting in Texas, Lord. Mothers and fathers, families who have lost their little ones. Oh, God, our hearts are wrenched when we think of what they're going through. Father, we pray comfort that you would be the God of comfort. That you would be the God of strength and courage for those parents, oh Lord. That you would lift them up in this time of their depression and their grief and their mourning, oh Lord. Fill their homes and their hearts with comfort. And they would know that there is a God who still cares. And there was a God who still loves and there was a God who is still able. Oh, Lord. We pray for them. We pray for law enforcement all over this country, oh, God. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask your protection over them. You have set them in their place of honor for a reason, oh God. You have set them in their place of occupation for a reason. And Father, without law and order, we would have chaos. So we pray your protection over them. We pray for them all over this country, oh Lord, and all over the world, oh Lord. We pray that you would have your way and your purpose, Lord. You would defeat the works of the enemy. Oh, you would come against, oh Lord, mental illnesses in these young people who seem to have no hope, oh God. That they feel going out and shooting up the place is their answer, oh Lord, taking lives, innocent lives, Father. And we ask so many times, oh Lord, where are you when this is happening? But Father, we know that all things work together for good. All things, Lord, you take it and you are able to make good out of it. So Father, while we are ignorant of how this brings any glory to you, Father, we pray that in all ways your name would be glorified. And we give you the thanks and the honor and the praise. Have your way. Let your purpose be fulfilled in all things. We give you praise. We pray for our 
service today, Lord. Our speaker. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would anoint her. Anoint her with the fullness of your spirit. And her words, oh God, that the words of God that she would share with us would bring fruit. Would bring healing. Would heal emotions, will heal sicknesses, oh Lord. We pray that your word would come alive in the house this morning and fulfill its purpose. For you have declared that your word shall never come back unto you void. Send it this morning. Send it through your servant. Send it with power. Send it with purpose. Send it, oh Lord, so that it would fulfill your purpose this morning. In the name of Jesus, we will give you praise. Even now for every miracle that we will see in the house. For every healing that we will experience. For every emotion that will be healed in the name of Jesus. For every family that will be healed. For every lost soul that will be saved. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise even now for it. And we give you glory. And we give you thanks. And we say, blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. As we lift you up this morning, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Please go ahead and have your seats as we make ready to receive from you your gifts and your offerings and the Lord's tithes this morning. May I invite the ushers to make ready. Hallelujah. We welcome you into the house this morning. Thank you for being here. Hallelujah. Sing. Yes. Let him arise in the house. Stretch your hands out front so we, as we bless the offering this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord. It is with grateful hearts that we lift this offering unto you. We thank you, O oh God, for your blessings in our homes and in our houses, on our jobs, in our careers, in our businesses. We thank you, Father, for providing. You have been a faithful God unto us. You have provided all our needs, O oh Lord, to the point that we are able to bring into the house gifts and offerings and tithes as you have commanded. And so, Father, we ask that you would bless it. Bless it, Lord. Bless the little that we give. Bless the little that we have. For with you, Lord, little is much. 
And so we praise you for it. We ask that you would bless it and you would stretch it and you would multiply it and you would make it sufficient for the needs of this house, Lord sufficiency yeah. in everything for we know God that with you all things shall be provided Amen. you have blessed us mightily in that you have never let us want you have never let us, let us bounce a check you have never let us gone without but father you have provided for our needs so we give you praise and now I bless your people I bless the hands I bless their prosperity I bless their businesses. Father, I ask that you would fulfill your promise that you would bless the hands of your people in everything that we do. You would give us prosperity and blessings. So we give you thanks even now in Jesus name. And the people of God believed with me and said Amen, Amen. amen. Thank you for your giving. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, can I hear another hallelujah? hallelujah? Hey, praise God. What an awesome day. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes. Yes. A special day for you and me. And we're glad you're in the house. But you know, with this memorial weekend, to see so many people in the house of the Lord, that is a testimony. Hallelujah. Because something good is going to happen to you today. Amen. Clap unto the Lord. Clap unto the Lord. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You wonder why we still have this up here? I'll tell you why. And I don't know long, how long I'm going to keep it. It's because Resurrection Sunday was not just one Sunday. Amen. And this should be a constant reminder amen. that our Lord is alive. Can I hear an amen? Yeah, amen. So Utrecht is working in some other background that are very nice. And so we, we want to keep it looking good. Your church is looking good. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, worship. Oh, my gosh. The Lord. We you were, guys were jumping and bubbling and ready to run. We ain't done yet. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Joey. Praise the Lord. Hi, Joey. I got a few people to thank just before we hand over to our beloved pastor. Um. The church is much cooler now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because some good hearted people contributed to buying a new um, AC unit and we got it put in free. Woo! <laughs> so, Neela, thank you. Well, Dale, so many people um, made this happen. Thank you so much. Three are working. So we still need to get one more. But uh, that's in the hands of the Lord in you. Thank you so much. Um, the service today is going to be unique as we like them to be. Um, Mick, did you tell them that you will not be here? Oh, well, Mick, today's Mick last Sunday for about three or four Sundays. He's going to see his mama, 95 years old, going 96. And he needs prayer because of uh, bone issues and this and that. But um, his, his love for his mama exceeds anything that he's going through, he and his wife. So we will pray for them. And if you miss them, um, they'll be in TT. Um, but with a U.S. mindset. So they, <laughs> they will be here. Praise God. The service is being Zoomed. And we put the information on my Facebook page and on the church Facebook page. So 
she has many uh, people watching the service. Um, we couldn't stream and Zoom at the same time, so she, we gave her the, the blessings of Zooming to her vast audience around the world. Um, my wife didn't want me to say this, but I have to say it. Could you come up here for a minute, babe? She said, she said, don't mention it is no big thing. But tomorrow makes us 51 years married. I think that's a big thing. That's a big thing. And she deserves the medal and the trophy. But I'll take the, this is how we arrange it. I'll take the credit. She'll take the cash. Happy, happy anniversary to you. You look lovely. Thank you for staying with me all these years. 51 years is not a little time. More blessings than blisters. <laughs> all right, more bliss than blisters. Can't get it better than that. Thank you. Praise the Lord. The lady, the young lady, the servant of the Lord, the minister for today. I... Uh, I'm excited for her because I've tasted personally of her ministry. Uh, Four Square Church in New York, uh, Pastor Jahir Ali and Asha introduced her to me and said, Pastor, you need, you need to contact this, this pastor. So I prayed and I called and she was very gracious to, to take my call and to set an appointment to pray for me. In that prayer, she prophesied into my life things that nobody knew. And when she spoke those words, I was shocked because those were dreams that I got and visions that I got that nobody knew. And she, she spoke them to me and said, just as you saw them, and she, she, she outlined them. Uh, that's how it's going to happen. I gained respect for her because she didn't know me. And I've been around a lot of prophets and people who talk and you know and they talk so. but you have to watch it and so this week again she prayed for me and I said oh my gosh the Lord had to be showing you these things because she, we didn't communicate it's not like she knows my story and she's using psychology to build on it no such thing pure gift the gift of discernment and the gift of faith and wisdom and the anointing. What she wants from you today is to avail yourself for the anointing. She wants you to relax and invite the presence of God. I can feel, I mean, I don't go by goosebumps, but I can feel the presence of the Lord here. So uh, just relax and expect your miracle. Carry the next few minutes in expectation. As the anointing comes, yes. as we sing, as we worship and glorify God, something supernatural is going to happen. Ooh. And it's going to happen Ooh. to you who believe in faith and who accept the work of Calvary. It's finished. Hallelujah. Come Pentecost. Come. Let the spirit of the Lord fall upon this place mightily. She, if, if you want to know someone who was in quest for God, who was searching for God. She came from a proper Brahmin family, a high caste system back there. Uh, but she couldn't find what she was yearning for in her heart. So she tried other religions, Jainism, Sikhism, Buddhism, she even tried Islam. And when everything failed, she found the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was the time. Her life was changed. And when she met with some leaders in this country, the Lord began to pour out ministry gifts into her. I want you to welcome and I want you to believe 
as this servant of the Lord come to minister to us. Welcome with a great deeper life welcome, Pastor Amanda Sharma. It's not about me. I am just a servant like all of us are. We are all one. And we are all ordinary people. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen? The Apostle Paul says, we are ordinary people like you. But it is the Lord Jesus Christ who has done miracles among you. And it is him who will do miracles among you. Do you believe? Do you believe? Hallelujah. You know, nothing pleases the Lord Jesus Christ than to have complete faith in him. That he is the same yesterday and today and forever. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I want to thank Pastor Omar. For this great honor and privilege to serve. I simply consider myself a servant. And that's what I am and that's what I'm going to be till my last breath. I'm here to serve you. I am here to serve you with the power and the might. Of the Holy Ghost for the glory of Jesus Christ. But I'm here for you. I'm here for you. And I'm thankful for this opportunity. I am thankful for this opportunity to serve. But can we just stand for just one minute and stand to our feet and give a big God bless you to Simon and the worship team. Yes, Jesus, bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them, Father. Bless them. They Aren't they wonderful? Praise God. You know, worship team is the backbone of any ministry. Backbone. And that's why they are so important. They are so important. And they do deserve honor. They do deserve honor. Because that's, that's service. That's service. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So can we just stand and worship with our hands lifted high as they sing, You deserve the glory. And what, I, what I'm going to urge you to do. The anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ is already in the house. You know how to receive your healing, your miracle, no matter, no matter what you want. Because our God is a big God. 
It doesn't matter if you want, if you need $10,000 or $20,000 or you need a brand new knee or you need brand new back and brand new pancreas. It doesn't matter what you need. We serve a big God. We serve the God who created the heavens and the earth. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. So would you please, would you please, as the worship team worships, just worship with them and surrender to the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to feel something. You're going to feel the power of God, power of the Holy Ghost flow through your body. Flow through your body. Your pain will go. Diabetes will disappear. High blood pressure will not be found in your body. That rheumatoid arthritis will disappear and will never return. Headaches. Or no matter what infirmity is afflicting you. It will go. Can you lift your hands and say, I believe. Your healing, your deliverance. No matter what you need, can you connect to his love? He loves you. He loves you. And you know, the best thing, the best thing I can tell you is just don't pray. Don't pray. Don't pray. Just yield your soul to the Holy Ghost. And you will see that your pain has left. You will see that the Holy Ghost 
is touching you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Stay in the presence and receive. Just receive. He loves you. He loves you. He is here to mend the brokenhearted, those who have lost the loved ones, those who have suffered any kind of abuse, those who have suffered pain. I know the Lord is touching you right now and he's taking your pain away. Will you give your pain to him? Yes, Lord. Touch. Touch. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke arthritis. I rebuke high blood pressure. I rebuke intestinal issues. Anybody having intestinal issues? There's a problem in your stomach. I rebuke that sickness in Jesus' name. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise, Lord. I rebuke arthritis. Just simply lift your hands to the Lord Jesus Christ and receive your healing. You are being healed. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. It's all about him. It's all about him. We are nothing but dust, but he is the treasure in the jars of He is the treasure in the jars. Can I see some hands lifted up if you feel the presence of the master? Can you lift your hand high if you feel the presence of the master? Those who had pain in your body, would you test your body and see that your pain is gone, that the master has healed you? Feel free to come out of into the aisle to test your body. Test your body to see that the master has healed you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you praise. I give you praise. How many of you feel the love of Jesus Christ? Do you feel his love touching you? you praise. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke disease. I rebuke infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Thank you. Lord Jesus said, if you believe, if you believe, you will see the glory of God and glory of God is to heal you, to set you free.
Let's do it. Hallelujah. And Lord, let the Lord minister to them. Let the Lord minister to you. Stay in his presence. I give you praise. Was there anyone among you who had pain in your body when you came? Can you raise your hand high so I can see your hand? Could you test your body and see? How are you doing? And if your pain is gone, can you just wave your hand? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, I give you the praise. If your pain is gone, can you wave your hand at me? Jesus, I give you the praise. Anybody else who had pain in your body? Would you come... Would you come forward? And the lady in the back, she said she had pain. Um, anybody else who has pain in your body? Can I see your hand high? Jesus. I give you the praise. Jesus, I give you the praise. Pastor, could we have somebody behind them to make sure that they're 
Sister, do you want to share? Hi. Do you want to share? Do you feel the presence of Jesus? I can see the presence of Jesus on you. All right, do you want to share what Jesus is? Actually, I have um, varicose vein, which I've been treated to with uh, the doctors with. Um, I have several procedures of the vein procedure that they do to my legs. Uh, but I still feel that tightness. While you pray, the pain went. Hallelujah. Can, we, can we give Jesus the praise? Hallelujah. To his name, I give you thanks, Lord, for your grace and favor. I rebuke that infirmity. I rebuke that tightness. You foul devil out in Jesus' name and return no more. All right, can you just go run around and see how your legs are doing? Go. You are free. You're loosed. Yes. How do you feel? Yes. Hallelujah. Um. Some healing come over me from my head to my sole of my feet. I feel something move out. Yeah. Did you have pain in your body? Yeah, and I have slight pain on just slight in the back there. Do you st- so the pain is gone? Yeah, yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Can we see you run all the way? You are loosed. You are loosed in Jesus' name. Run for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're loosed. You are loosed. You are loosed in the name of Jesus. You foul devil, you lose her right now in Jesus' name. Loose her. You foul spirit of infirmity, loose her in Jesus' name. Go and return no more. I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Those who can pray in tongues, pray in tongues silently and uh, 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 if we can just keep the low hallelujah, that would be so great. Yes, ma'am. Yes. My name is Pam Strong, and I've been suffering for the last three months. And the doctor sent me to do call on up tests, and it come back normal. And I'm so sick still. So he sa- said he's going to send me to do the one that I have to put the camera down in my stomach because it could be pancreas. Could you just tell her, just receive. Just receive. <laughs> I, had a, I had a word of knowledge for stomach issues. Could you explain to her that the Lord has healed her stomach? Healed her stomach. In Jesus' name. Be loosed in Jesus' name. All right. Okay. Well, they will testify. (laughs) Will you guys testify, right? Because it's him, the healer, right? He's the miracle worker. Amen. Hallelujah. Could you please um, thank you, Jesus. I give you the praise. Okay. So let me just ask, um, is there anybody among you who has any sickness in your body? Will you stand up, please? some sickness in your body so would you just lift your hands to the Lord and simply 
just receive in his presence there's healing in his presence there's healing no matter what your sickness is no matter what your disease is heart condition i rebuke in jesus name i rebuke it in jesus name be healed and be made whole in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every foul evil impure spirit i rebuke you and i command you to come out in the name of jesus christ out out and return no more every devil of fear every devil of oppression every generational spirit of sickness or disease every generational spirit out in jesus name and return no more loose jesus i give you the praise mighty power of the holy ghost flow through their bodies would you so just don't pray and don't beg you know when we beg and when we pray we hinder the lord from healing us whoever came to the lord jesus christ never prayed never begged never prayed just he's here his presence is here simply yield and receive your healing be healed be healed my sister be healed my brother in jesus name i give you praise you foul spirit of infirmity loose in jesus name go and return no more hallelujah all right how do you feel i'm feeling better i'm feeling better i'm nervous but i'm feeling better <laughs> that i'm not feeling so much pain that i had before You want it back? No, I'm happy for it to go. <laughs> well, then the Lord just give glory to God and thank just God. Thank God. walk fast. I want thank anybody God. who got free, I want you to get out of your seat as a as a proclamation of faith in the name of Jesus Christ and walk around and do something. to demonstrate your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ this is how we honor the Lord Jesus Christ when we demonstrate our faith in his presence i want everybody who is sick i want you to stand up run around do something as a your demonstration of faith in Jesus Christ do something you are healed in Jesus name it is his presence that heals <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. Let's do oh sorry. Let's do her greater, higher and just walk around and move around. That foul devil is gone in Jesus name. You foul spirit out in Jesus name and return no more. Spirit of stress and fear, spirit of arthritis. Loose in Jesus name and return no more. Right? <laughs> to somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet and give glory to Jesus because it is him who heals. It is him who heals. He heals, he saves, he restores and he blesses. Everybody, let's take Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes to give glory to Jesus. Yes, sir.
시간이 있는데 진짜 What is going on? Can he take his mic off? to be healed. I'm standing in a for her. Well, then she's healed. She's delivered from that devil. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I lose your wife from that devil of depression and devil of death and suicide. She is loosed. Those devils have gone out of her. When you go home, you're going to return to a different woman. Now stop. Stop, stop. Brother, stop. Brother, stop. Brother, stop glorifying the devil. Stop glorifying the, the depression. Stop glorifying the devil. Lift your faith in Jesus Christ. His presence is here. Yes, glorify him. He has delivered your wife. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I consider it done, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Somebody shout hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You do miracles so great. You do miracles so great. You are great. It's Jesus. If you believe Jesus is great, shout hallelujah. Well, brother, call your wife and see how she's doing. Hallelujah. All right. Everybody, everybody, everybody who was sick, who had some sickness, I want you to come forward and I want you to give glory to Jesus. Come on. Your sickness is gone. Those devils are gone. He's a God of miracles. Amen. He's a God of miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm just giving God the glory. I'm the one you spoke about with the stomach issues. The doctor doesn't know what it is. But God knows what it is. And I believe that God is doing a the work there. And um, I have problems with depression, the diabetes, and all that. But. I believe God has done a work, he's doing a work, and I'm giving him the praise. Brother, your diabetes, you felt the power of God touch you, right? As long as you felt the power of God touch you, every disease, every sickness, that foul diabetes has left your body, your pancreas, your liver is healed in Jesus' name. Your liver is healed in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, brother, there is restoration in your family. The devil has created havoc in your family. 
And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as a servant of God, I take authority over the devils that have destroyed your family, that are creating havoc in your family. That is generational backstabbing, backbiting. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke those devils. I rebuke those devils in Jesus' name. I declare, brother, restoration. In Jesus' name, brother, receive. And that foul devil of sugar diabetes, generational demon of sugar diabetes has left your body. I give you praise. Father, thank you for restoring my brother's family. And Father, thank you for taking away my brother's pain, mending his broken heart that he has endured because of so much family pain. There is just so much pain and dishonor. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke that in your family, brother. Be healed and be made whole, be restored. I rebuke that spirit of anger that's in your family. I rebuke that foul devil of anger that's in your family. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. You foul devil of anger, you loose this family and return no more. I give you praise. I give you praise. And you foul demon of suicide. That's in the family too. You foul serpent. You foul demon of suicide. You will lose him and lose his bloodline now. Loose in Jesus' name and return no more. I cancel your power. I cancel your assignment over this bloodline. By the power of Galatians 3.13, by the power of the word of God, and by the power of the name of Jesus Christ, and by the power of the blood, of the Lord Jesus Christ. You devils out. Out. Every one of you. Out. And you will not oppress him anymore. I give you praise. Brother, how do you feel? My goodness, God has done something for you today, hasn't he? Yes, God is working. God is working. He, he loves you. You know, whatever is going on in the secret, he has heard everything and he has answered all your cries today, brother. Do you believe this? I believe it. Brother, you're going to see restoration in your family. Give God the glory for that. How's your body pain? <laughs> you know, at my age, you know, whatever works helps. <laughs> what? We got to do better than that. Though. Exactly, <laughs> right? You, you see, Moses was 120. You're not 120. You're ha oh, even half. Woo. Come on. Come oh, on almost. Now. Almost. <laughs> well, no. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. How's your, how's your arm and shoulder? Woo. Come on. Victory, victory. Doing better? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give glory to Jesus. Give glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, I give you praise. Jesus, I give you praise. Jesus, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. You see, 
Um, when the Lord came to people, you know the first thing he did, he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. Sometimes we tend to suffer far more than we ought to. Do you realize that it hurts the Lord when you're sick? Do you realize that it grieves the Lord, it pains the Lord when you are sick, when you're oppressed, when you're in poverty and sickness and diseases? Why? 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 How many of you know why it hurts the Lord when you are sick and when you are oppressed and when you are hurting? How many of you know? How many want to know why it hurts the Lord? Let me see your hands that you really want to know. Because he's in here. Because he's in you. You know when the when Saul before he became apostle Paul, when he was persecuting the saints, Lord Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why, why, why thou persecutest me? So you don't think that when you are sick, when you are hurting, when you are oppressed, when you are struggling, that he inside of you is not hurting? Why do you persecute me? He did not say, why do you persecute Christians? He did not say, why do you persecute my people? He said, why do you persecute me, Saul? And do you realize in Matthew 25, from verse 31 to 46, the Lord Jesus said, when I was sick, you did not visit me. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I was thirsty, you did not give me water to drink. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. When I was a stranger, you did not get me in. When I was in prison, you did not come and visit me. Do you realize who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? There's no separation between you and the Lord. You know when Jesus sees you, he sees him so. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter who you are. When you, as long as you have received the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ sees you, he sees him so. And he says, this is me. This is me. How many of you believe that you are like Jesus? That when he sees you, he sees himself. That when you hurt, he hurts. Because Colossians 3, 3 said, now you have died and your life is hidden in Christ in God. So you have died and your life is hidden in God and Christ is in you, the hope of glory. So when you look into the mirror, who do you see? Can you see Christ? When you see yourself in the mirror, can you see, can you see Christ instead of yourself? So when you are hurting, can you realize that the Lord is hurting with you? And he, he wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. Right. 
can you guys agree like this like they get it they get it can you guys get it too can you get it too hallelujah hallelujah and do you realize that when i am serving you i'm serving christ to jesus be the praise to jesus be the praise yes sir diabetes consistent and i have a pressure and another that puts me under the care of a specialist can i say that for now what that's it high blood pressure diabetes uh -huh. high blood pressure and another that puts me puts me under the care of a specialist okay so i had the word of knowledge that the high blood pressure the diabetes the lord is here to heal the lord is here to heal the lord is here to take away jesus be healed in jesus name just lift your hands to him in faith in complete faith in absolute faith without any doubt in your heart without any doubt in your heart in our tuesday church service last tuesday's church service people testified of being completely completely cleared healed of sugar diabetes that that they had for years people testified in our services cancer completely disappeared sugar diabetes completely gone high blood pressure completely gone doctors giving clear report and it's all on our youtube so brother receive in the name of jesus i rebuke that sugar diabetes brother come closer i won't hurt you I give you praise. Mighty power of the Holy Ghost flow through my brother. That foul devil of sugar diabetes and high blood pressure, you lose his body now in Jesus name. Go and return no more. Liver, pancreas be healed in Jesus name. Do you feel the power of God? But right now, what do you feel? Be honest with you, I, I feel okay, but I'm looking in expectation for something to happen. Okay, so can you just touch your toes and do something and see how your body feels? Do you feel looser, but do you feel lighter? Did you have the little heaviness and now you feel a little lighter? Heaviness, no. Um, with my diabetes and hyperpressure, I feel very normal. And uh, what led me to be under the care of a specialist, I feel okay. So I wouldn't know for the other reason if I'm healed or not because my specialist has to come. Okay, from. okay. If you believe, you will see. Here, brother, be loosed. Be loosed. Be loosed. Be loosed. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want. I want. All right, everybody, please have a seat. Um, to Jesus be the praise. Can I see some hands that you received your healing? Hallelujah. Look at that. Can we give Jesus Christ the glory and praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you praise. 
I give you praise. Well, I want to minister very short word to you and then again minister to you. As the Holy Spirit is leading me um, and the worship team, I am so thankful to you guys. You guys are just awesome. Thank you, Brother Simon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can we give them really a big hand? of applause because they really, I need them. I absolutely need them. I absolutely need them. We all need them, right? Jesus. So if you guys want to take a seat, um, that, that so gets, get some rest. Um, but I'm so thankful to you. Well, I want to minister just a very short word that the Lord put on my heart to minister to you. How many of you are a little afraid of what is going on and where we are headed. Let me see some hands. Are you guys afraid, anxious of what is going on? What's going to happen? Right? So only a few of you, rest everybody's brave. Praise be to God. <laughs> Everybody is, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so in these times, of anxiousness, of where the world is headed, these times, we need one word. We need one thing, and that is called hope. Amen? Hope. How many of you want to know how to get hope, how to have hope? Let me see some hands. Right? Right? We're going to work together. So we're going to interact, right? I love to interact because I love you guys. I love you guys. You know what? You guys may not have known me. I may not have known you. But you know what? We are one family in Jesus Christ, don't are we? We are, right? We are brothers and sisters, aren't we? So I belong to you and you belong to me, right? Amen. Amen? So we're going we're gonna to interact. Amen? So we need hope. How do we have hope? How do we get hope? Well, one way and one way only. The Bible says that those who believe in the unfailing love of God have hope. When you believe in the love of God for you, unfailing, unwavering love of God for you, that's when you have hope. But the moment you believe that, oh, God doesn't love me, I'm his stepchild, or I'm his, you know, second cousin or third cousin or something like that. No, <laughs> when you see that God sees you as his son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, when he looks at you, he looks at himself when you know what Jesus Christ has done that's when you have hope the apostle peter says the apostle peter says grow in the grace and the knowledge of our lord jesus christ why why do we need to grow in the knowledge of jesus christ why do we need to grow in the grace of jesus christ because that's where we get to know the love of god if we don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, how will we know the love of God? It's impossible. Because God is love. And love put on the body of flesh. Amen? That's what we need to know. The Lord Jesus Christ and his grace over our life. Right? Romans 15, 13. The apostle Paul says, uh, how many of you love the Apostle Paul? <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the Apostle Paul after the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so the Apostle Paul, who said in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, that the mystery of the gospel is revealed to me. Oh, my goodness. When you read the epistles, you really get to know what mystery of the gospel was revealed to the Apostle Paul. 
Now, let's go back to Romans 15, 13, when the Apostle Paul says, Now may, may the God of hope. Or did he say, may, may the God of hopelessness <laughs> leave you <laughs> to your fears? No. May the God of hope. Fill you with what? Fill you with fear? Fill you with all joy. With you, with all joy and peace. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Who is given to us. If we can simply get just this much. This scripture, we will be able to carry, we will be able to go through these times, go through these times of uncertainty, of food prices going up, and this is happening, and that is happening, the shooting happening, and the Lord Jesus prophesied that, that we are going to face such times. But guess what? Christian life is not just one way street or just one thing. Christian life is a balanced life. We have to have the balance. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ prophesied famines will happen, rumors of war will happen, plagues will happen, this will happen and that will happen. But the Lord Jesus Christ also said that in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The apostle Paul said that in Jesus Christ we are more than conquerors. How many of you want to know what is more than conquerors? See, conqueror is someone who wins who, the battle, who wins the battle when they fight the battle, when they fight the enemy, and when they are, they subdue their enemy, and that's called a conqueror. Amen? More than a conqueror is someone who rejoices in the victory of another conqueror. That somebody else wins the war, fights the battle, subdues the enemy, and more than the conqueror, who somebody who says, yeah, I have the victory. I have the victory. So did you crush the devil under, under your feet or the, or the Lord Jesus Christ crushed the devil for you? Did he destroy the devil or did you? Now may the God of peace soon will crush Satan under your feet. So, are you the conqueror? Or you are more than a conqueror? So you see, a lot of the Christians, a lot of the saints, they suffer. Our brothers and sisters suffer greatly because they want to be conquerors. They want to be conquerors. I must conquer my fear. I must conquer the devil. Devil, I rebuke you. Devil, I beat you with my shoes. I throw pots and pans at you. Why? He's defeated. The Bible says he's destroyed. He's destroyed. If the Bible says the devil is destroyed, he is destroyed, you can read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Sorry, 14. Hebrews chapter 14, I believe, and 6. Um, that he destroyed the one who had the power of death. So, if the devil is already destroyed, then how can you be a conqueror? How do you 
become a conqueror by defeating somebody who is already defeated and destroyed. So you're fighting in vain. The Apostle Paul says, I do not punch in the air. I do not fight my fight like punching in the air. So when you try to fight the devil, you're fighting with the air. You have to, you have to stand in the victory on the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ who has defeated and destroyed the devil for you and made you more than a conqueror for God's sake. Somebody shout hallelujah. God has made you more than a conqueror. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 and 6 that God hath quickened us. Quickened us. Made us alive while we were dead in sin. So if you were dead in sin, how can you defeat the devil? How can you defeat the devil? If you are dead in sin. God hath quickened us and hath raised us up with Jesus Christ and made us to sit in him in the heavenly places. To Jesus be the praise. This is who you are. Let me show you something. So you know from this day onwards, my brothers and sisters, you will not try to work to conquer. Rather, you will start to live from your victory that is given, handed to you. That is handed to you. Lord Jesus Christ, this is the truth. You can read the Bible. I've read my Bible. I was taught the Bible by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Nobody taught me the Bible. Nobody led me to salvation. Nobody prayed for my healing, for me to get healed. It was the Lord Jesus Christ who appeared to me face to face and he healed me when I was a cripple in a car accident. I was a cripple in a car accident and almost tried to commit suicide. But then the Lord showed up and guess what? I was not even a believer. I was not even a believer. I was an atheist. I did not believe in Jesus Christ. I did not believe in God. I thought that, okay, there is a God somewhere, but he hates me and he's cruel, he's mean. That was my faith. So, let me give you a news. Lord Jesus Christ does not heal you because you have faith to be healed. You know when, so I have a healing ministry. I'm ordained by Pastor Benny Hinn. I got ordained by him in 2018. And since then, God has been doing miracles. Blind see, deaf hear, and they don't even have to be there in, in my meeting. There was a child who was born deaf. I, her, his mom came to my healing service, and I said, do you believe that the Lord Jesus can do that? She said, yes. I said, put your hand on your, on your chest as a point of faith, and I'll pray. So I rebuked the deaf spirit, and the boy was somewhere else with his aunt, and he started speaking for the first time. You see, this is the God we serve. We had five-year-old blind girl. Her mom brought her to our healing service on Zoom. That baby, everybody saw in the meeting that that baby could not see before. But all of a sudden, I rebuked the spirit of blindness, and her eyes straightened up, and she could see. So, and then on top of that, guys, on top of that, yes, give glory to Jesus. <laughs> give glory to Jesus. And on top of that, on top of that, this little five-year-old girl, not only she could see, and then because she could see, she could walk, and she would start to say, hallelujah, hallelujah. Her, 
So her mom and her friends, um, mom's friend, they were like, not only she can see, but now she just goes around walking saying, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You see, from the mouth of infants, I will receive my praise. Did this little girl have faith to be healed? No, she didn't. Five-year-old. What does a five-year-old know? Did that boy have faith to heal, to, to be free from death spirit? No. Did I have faith to be healed? No. The apostle Peter explains it perfectly in Acts chapter 3. He explains to the Pharisees that this man that you see Who's made, who was born crippled and is made whole in your presence, he is not healed. He's not healed because of our power or our holiness, but by the faith in the name of Jesus Christ and by the faith through Jesus Christ. By the faith in Jesus Christ. You see, you did that man have faith to be healed? You don't need faith to be healed. I have faith to be healed. No, you need faith in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That he has overcome and made you more than an overcomer, more than a conqueror. Have faith in Jesus. And this is how this is how we're going to deal with these situations and circumstances. This is how we're going to have hope. We're not going to be beat up by the devil. If we are more than conquerors, we have to learn to live as more than conquerors. Not fight our battles here. We fight our battles in heaven. Are you seated? Come on, guys. Come on. What does the Bible say? Ephesians, sorry, Colossians 3.3 3 says, you have died. You have died. And now your life is hidden in Christ in God. Your postal address is in God. Your postal address, your body, your life is hidden in Jesus Christ. And and Christ now hidden in you. You are his postal address. You are his postal address. You can't live weakly, weekly life. You can't. So now, do you agree that God said to the Lord Jesus Christ in Psalm 110, verse 1, and also, I believe it's Luke 34, verse 7, I believe. The Lord Jesus Christ is quoting King David, who was a prophet. He's saying, how can you say that son of man is the son of David when David himself said, the Lord saith to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Also, the Bible says, the uh, king, uh, God says, where will you build a house for me? Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Come on, guys. Are you guys getting it yet? Yes. Are you guys getting it yet? <laughs> guys, the Bible says, do you believe that you are the body of Jesus Christ? Do you believe when the Apostle Paul says that Jesus Christ is the head 
And do you believe that we are his members, like the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians? Do you believe that? So when God said, sit on my right hand while I make your enemies your footstool, where, whose feet? Whose feet? If you are the feet of Jesus Christ, then whose feet? Come on, guys, are you guys getting it? So under whose feet God is putting the devil, all the, all the enemies of God? Are they not your feet? So God is fighting the battle by the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost, don't think for a second that the Holy Ghost is some meek and timid dove that just flies around. He is a warrior. He is a man of war. The Holy Ghost. Don't look at the Holy Ghost just a dove flying around. He is a man of war. And he came in you. Romans 5, 5. Love of the God. Love of God is shed abroad our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says the spirit of Christ dwells in your heart, cries out of a father. So you got the spirit of Christ in you. You got the Holy Ghost in you. You are the body of Jesus Christ. You are, you are more than conquerors. Look at your potential. Look at your responsibility. If you get beat up, if you get beat up by the devil, is it the will of God? God does not send sickness on you to teach you a lesson. God put your lesson on Jesus Christ on the cross. So, Anybody who believes that God made me sick to teach me a lesson or make me humble, well, Jesus made himself humble. Read Isaiah 53. You will realize that it is, it is the Lord Jesus Christ who took that punishment, took all of it so you can be healthy, so you can fight the devil. You can fight. You can live victorious. By the power of the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Ghost. As who you are in Jesus Christ. Let me, let me show you something. Let me explain something to you. Lord Jesus Christ could not destroy the devil, defeat the devil. Could not at all. Could not defeat him as God. Absolutely impossible. Lord Jesus could not defeat the devil as God. Could not destroy him as God because then the devil would cry out foul. He will cry out foul. Right? Why? Because the devils in the synagogue, yeah, devils are in the synagogue and in the church. So, don't believe for a second that Christians can't have demons. So, <laughs> how many of you are feeling that power of God right now? Amen. Amen. Do you want me to continue? Right? Or do you guys want to go home? All right. The devil, these devils recognized the Lord Jesus Christ and they said, we know who you are. We know who you are. Have you come before our time to torment us? So, Lord Jesus said, shut up. <laughs> because the Lord Jesus, he didn't want people to know that he's defeating the devil as God.
Lord Jesus Christ defeated the devil as a man. Now, not man who could not be tempted, not man who was super strong, Superman. No, not that Superman. Not Spider-Man. And read your Bibles. You know, guys, this is my life. I live in the Bible. I live in the Bible. Ordinary man, where do you see that? Pastor Amanda, where is that? Isaiah 53. Isaiah 50, uh, 52. Isaiah 52. That 52 and 53, you will see that he was not extraordinary. He was ordinary. Ordinary man. He humbled himself and put on a form of a servant. He was an ordinary man just as you are, just as I am. And that's why people didn't believe him. If he came like a Superman, they'll be all falling. Oh, Superman! <laughs> With a big cape flying? Yeah. No. And guess what? He died. And he defeated the devil when people thought he was a sinner. Yeah. Matthew, John. John 9, 24. John 9, 24. Um, the Pharisee. The Pharisees say, well, let me just. Uh, John 9, 24. When the Lord Jesus Christ healed the blind man, right? When he healed the blind man, the Pharisees said to him, how can that man heal you? We know he's a sinner. So it's almost like you and I, we are praying for somebody. And that person get, gets healed, gets a miracle. And some Pharisee, well, how can you heal? You are a sinner. You don't keep the law. You don't even keep the Sabbath. It was just that. That Jesus Christ destroyed the devil. Not God. He did not demonstrate the power. You see, he said, I do not teach on my own. He had no power to teach. If you think he had the power to teach, he himself said, I have no power to teach you. I can't teach. I only teach you what, I, what, I, what my father has taught me. It's in your Bible. Can you teach? Can you preach? He said, I do not do these things on my own. I only do what, I, what my father sees, uh, what I see my father do. So do you think he had the power? He said, I have all the power. And look at my power. Do you see how ordinary Jesus was? He had no power to heal. He had no power to preach. He was an ordinary man like the first Adam and like you and me. And that man who was tested in every possible way yet remained sinless for you and I. Remained sinless and took the punishment and the wrath 
All the lessons that you think God wants to teach you, they all went on Jesus. God is not teaching you a lesson. They all went on Jesus. What God wants you to live from is more than a conqueror. There's no more lesson to learn except love, that God loves you. That God loves you. And you see, as a man, as an ordinary man, by the power of the Holy Ghost, right? So, by the power of the Holy Ghost, because the Bible says, and he gave himself by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right? He is the one who destroyed the devil. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, the devil says, the devil shows the glory of the world to the Lord Jesus Christ and kingdoms of the world and says, I will give you all these things if you bow down to me and worship me. Lord Jesus did not say, devil, you're a liar, 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 pants on fire, get out. <laughs> no. Because he was telling the truth for, one, for once. I think that was the only time he told the truth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because it was to his benefit. Uh, it, so the Lord did not argue with him that, no, devil, you don't have. You can't give me that. No, Lord Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan. It is written, thou shalt serve the, uh, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now, wait for something. The Bible says, Isaiah chapter 50, Isaiah 50 verse 1, God says, I have not sold you into slavery. Who are my debtors that I will sell you to? I have no debtors to sell you to. You yourself sold yourself. You yourself sold yourself because of your sins and because of your iniquities. So the devil was telling the truth. The first Adam sold all of us and himself and his wife to the devil. That's why he could say that. Now watch something. Let me have everybody's attention for a minute. This whole thing changed. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. The Lord Jesus said, Now I have been given all power in heaven and on earth. And therefore, go make disciples of all nations, teaching them all that I've commanded you. Guys, don't believe for a second that the devil is still ruling the world. He's not God of the world anymore. He's not God of this world. Lord Jesus said the prince of this world is cast out. Come on, guys. Don't worship the devil. Stop worshiping the devil. Stop worshiping the diseases. Stop worshiping your troubles. Stop saying devil is attacking me. Devil is doing this and devil is that. No. Stop talking about your ex-husband. Your ex-husband is defeated. Stop pranking him. Now your new husband is Jesus Christ who has won the victory for you. You are not the devil's slave anymore because Jesus Christ has set you free. Who the Son set free is free indeed. Somebody stand to your feet and give glory. Who 
Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Are you, are you set free or not? There is such power of God right now because his word, his word has power to me. To me, I live this. This is everything to me. This is what gives me power. This is what gives me everything, hope and everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To Jesus be the praise. To Jesus be the praise. If you are getting this, shout hallelujah. You're, divorce your ex-husband. Completely let him go. Don't glorify him. He brings sicknesses and diseases and oppression. Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38 says, this is about your ex-husband. <laughs> or our ex-husband. <laughs> the Bible says, please be seated. The Bible says that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, anointed by the Holy Ghost, by the power and the Holy Ghost, or Holy Ghost and power, went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. So that ex-husband, he brings oppression, sickness, diseases, depression, fear. And his main goal is to make you doubt in your new husband. That's why there's spirit of Christ and there's spirit of antichrist. Why is there a spirit of antichrist? Have you thought about that? To make you doubt in Christ. Antichrist. To make you doubt in his word. To make you doubt what he has accomplished for you. That he fought this battle. He defeated and destroyed the devil as you. So it's as though you defeated the devil. As an ordinary person. And then, by his resurrection, by your new birth, guess what? The Bible says you are born in the likeness of God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Are you getting this? You are born in the likeness of God. The Apostle Peter says God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Lacking nothing. And the Apostle Paul says that um, fullness of the Godhead dwells in Christ Jesus in the bodily form. And you are made complete in him. So do you realize who you are? That sickness cannot live in your body. That disease cannot live in your body. Because the spirit of Christ lives in you. Those devils that are harassing you, even nightmares. Anybody who has nightmares, lift your hands. That you get nightmares. Those devils, anybody else who gets nightmares, that you get bad dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke that spirit of nightmare and it shall not visit you any longer. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Are you being built up in the word? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To you be the praise. To you be the praise. All right. I believe we are supposed to take up an offering. So we will um, let. Okay. Or uh, like. Um, you guys close at noon? Is that when we are over? Because I'm, I have to be a little concerned with the time as well. So I'm done with the word. And if anybody else, after the offering, if anybody else needs prayer, 
they can stay and those who want to leave, they can leave and I can stay for people who need more ministry. So is, does that sound okay? So not everybody's waiting because I'm kind of like, I want to be consider, considerate. So let me ask you, let, let me see your hands. Did, did, did this word help you? Right? And you know, the same Christ is in you. You have the power to rebuke the devil. Because he's destroyed. And God wants to put his enemies under your feet because Christ is in you. Correct. Amen. Hallelujah. So let God fight your battles. Right? Amen. Amen? Yeah. Do, can we give a shout of praise to Ooh. Jesus? Hallelujah. Don't take the offer yet. Please, y'all don't go. Please, please. She deserves everything that you got in your pocket, in your pocketbook. Yes. Pastor Shabba, you said some things here. Saints, let us just soak in some of the things. You, you talk about, Je you know Jesus. Yes. When you said that you don't have faith, you don't have to have faith to be healed. I almost went out of the church. But she explained herself. <laughs> The faith you have to have is in Jesus. It's the first time I hear it like this. This is the mistake that he made in Mark chapter 6. When he went to his own tongue, his own household, his own country. Who is he? He's a carpenter. I know his sisters. I know his brothers. They did not have faith in him. What we have to do is to have faith. I have, I have some situations. I was going to ask you to pray for me. But I receive my healing from the word. If you feel that, you could still lay hands on me. I'm not ashamed of that. But saints of God, just, just, just soak in the word a little bit. The mistake they made in Mark chapter 6, they failed to recognize Jesus. Your faith is in Jesus, not to be healed. First time I hear this. Do you have faith in Jesus today? That he is who he said he is? Do you have that faith? And another thing she said that made me feel so good. Jesus looks like me. Can you imagine Jesus looking like me? First time anybody ever told me Jesus looked like me. But you know the Bible says that you have died in Colossians 3.3. 3. He said, and your life is hid with Christ. That word hid is crypto. You are encrypted just as if a computer programmer put up some numbers. All you see is the numbers. But within those numbers, there are messages. Your life is encrypted with Christ. It's no more you and me, Brother Brown. Pastor Desmond, it's no more us. It's Christ. Soak in the word of God. Believe in the word of God. Stand. She deserves a hand clap. She deserves a handshake. She deserves your love. She deserves your offering. God deserves your praise. And take your healing and walk in your victory. Walk in the victory. You cannot get it better than this. Walk in the victory. Wow. 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 You don't need faith to be healed. You just need faith in Jesus Christ. The same Jesus who you're looking to come from heaven. Where you think he come from heaven and he's not here now. You are encrypted. Let us, let me pray before we take the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Y'all don't leave, don't leave, please. God, we thank you for this word, for this minister, for this woman of God. We thank you. We bless her in Jesus' name. I pray that you will speak to the hearts of your people, that they will bless her. She deserves the blessing of your people. So stir up their hearts now, Lord. And whatever it is we give, I pray, oh God, that we bless it and you will multiply it like the loaves and the fish, that it will do much more than it looks like it can do. In Jesus' name, as we commit this offering into your hands to give to her. In Jesus' name, amen. You can take the offering.
If you want her to minister to you, you can wait after the offering. She will minister to you. Those of you who want to remain, don't go if you have a problem, if you have a need. So Ma, I'll turn over to you now and you don't want to come and say something. Okay. Well, we want to dismiss, but you don't have to leave, right? Yes. You want to minister. That's right. You want to minister after. Yes. Okay. Jesus. All right. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk in your victory now. As I turn back over to her, you can go if you have to. If you want to stay, you stay and let her minister to you. God bless you. Shalom. Praise the Lord. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Well, I want to pray for... Um, I want to pray for the leaders in the house if they are okay with it. Yes. Um, yes. And I also wanted to pray for Pastor Omar. Praise God. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and his beautiful bride. Yes. Doesn't she look marvelous? Yes. I love her outfit. So young. <laughs> look at her. She's so beautiful. Ooh. So, you know, when I spoke to her, so when I talked to her yesterday, it, so she just wanted to know, like, what I wanted to eat after the service and everything. <laughs> oh, my gosh, guys. Like, I felt as though I have known her forever. And she made me feel so loved. Praise oh, my God. I mean, that's, that's how she is. <laughs> like, oh, my God. I feel like I've known you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so, like you have so much love in your heart, and thank you so much. You made me feel so loved. So, praise God, praise God. Yeah, so anybody who needs prayer, you guys can come forward. Don't be shy, don't be shy, don't be shy. And the leaders, um... If we could get the leaders so I can pray for them as the Holy Spirit leads me. Yes, ma'am. I just need healing. Is that pain or degenerative disc?